if China grows 5%, what's the LNG demand pool going to be from them? I think China is in a very, very difficult predicament on this because they understand that um, they're dependent for energy on the rest of the world and particularly on the United States. So if we chose not to deliver LNG to China or if we chose to prevent natural gas from getting to China from anywhere except the pipeline to Russia or if we decided that oil from the Middle East couldn't go to China, they're in trouble. Mm -hmm. And if they're in trouble for energy, they're also in trouble for food because, as you know, fertilizers, food, it's all coming on the same trade lines. So I don't think they want to acknowledge this, uh, but at the same time, they're confronted with the reality that if they want to get back to 5% growth, they're going to need a ton of energy. They've pivoted as much as they can to coal. In spite of all the environmental issues they've had, and I'm talking about uh, pollution, I'm not talking about what's mm -hmm. going to happen in 30 years. Uh, they had some real issues that they have to deal with. They made their choices. Their priority is energy security. So, but are you, are you envisioning cargoes right now being sent to China, say, at the expense of, say, Europe, for example? Are you seeing that? At the moment, I think it's going to be a true open market, and if they're willing to pay the price, they're going to get the gas. So, the, I mean, for a year, they were using COVID for whatever reason to clamp down on their economy. I think now that they've made a decision to get back to growth, they're going to be back in the market very, very significantly, and they're going to start competing with Europe for that natural gas. Are you talking to China right now, Chinese companies? Uh, no, not really. Why? I didn't like the experience I had with them when I was a engineer, so... Uh, I find that if they want the gas, they will buy it on the market, and that's sufficient for me. I don't really need to have long-term agreements with people that I don't have confidence in. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with saying a deal with China means nothing because they told me. They said, your contract is worth the paper it's written on. Oh, so, uh, so, so basically uh, you can I, sign a contract, but it won't and, mean anything. And I, and I believed them. That's I said, okay, I understand. So, so you buy the gas on the water and it'll be fine. So then. Where does the contract mean something? So, so last year you talked about a lot of interest from Pakistan as well as India, Vietnam, some countries in Africa for some of your LNG. Uh, what are those conversations like? Who's into it? Well, with those countries it breaks your heart because they need it to, for the most essential things in life. I mean, to for, for fertilizers. Without fertilizers they don't feed their people. And you almost feel bad about charging them the prices uh, that are currently prevalent on the market. It's mm -hmm. just like, it break, it, it's difficult to live with your conscience when, when prices like this happen. Now, um, so we would like to be able to do something for countries like uh, Bangladesh and Pakistan that would be a little bit more reasonable. I'm not quite sure how to structure it. But before we do this, we have to get our project off the ground. So at the moment, we're focused on getting our project financed. We'll deal with the commercial implications later. But to get a finance is also long-term contracts. So who are you talking to right no, now to I make don't that think, happen? No, I don't think you need long-term contracts. So it's still the think, equity stake in Driftwood LNG? It is the equity stake in the company. How are those conversations going? Those are going very, very well because in the last 18 months, a lot of the potential counterparties have money. 18 months ago, they could see what was happening, especially with the fall of 21, when prices in Europe started going through the roof, and people, initially the politicians said, it's just because it's a cold winter. Well, that's not true. It's the fundamental issue of uh, less supply than demand, and all of a sudden it's catching up with you after a decade where we had more supply than demand. But what happens if natural gas prices stay low? And I say stay low, because they're down 80%, but they're still much higher than they normally are. If natural gas doesn't get that extra spike, does well, that money okay. go away? So the prices right now is $15 an MMBTU on the, on the rest of the world. Yeah. And this is in the shoulder season. They were $30 and $40 only six months ago. And as we heat up in the season again, they're going to go back up. So $15 in MMBTU is the equivalent of $120 oil prices. This is not cheap. Okay, and if uh, Europe wants to convince themselves that $15 in MMBTU is affordable, they are going to have to go and talk to their constituents to c explain to them why the utility bills have tripled. Okay, so prices will then be relatively high. You people now, they, they understand the reasoning and now they have the money. 
So give me an idea of who you're talking to to sell that equity stake. Pretty Are they much regionally or is it NOC? Is it a private equity? What? No, I don't think the NOCs have much interest in developing a new industry in a country that they can't control. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's going to be mostly large international companies with a lot of oil exposure and uh, global exposure to natural gas, not American exposure. American exposure gets you stuck in that sort of $3 to $5 yeah. range uh, if you don't have access to the water. And uh, you over drill, prices come down, you under drill, prices come back up, but they're kind of stuck in a medium between $3 and $5. With, and, you know, it's get out, it gets out of the band, but not for very long. So, Whereas if you're global, mm -hmm. you're getting 15 to $30 an M. And if you're an oil company, you're getting $80 a barrel on your way probably to 120 or 150. And as long as all these companies are paying dividends and rebuying their stock uh, almost two to one to what they're investing in their own business, we're condemned to have high prices so, for all energy. Okay, so to that point, uh, if number 10 is you're going to sign a contract right now for an equity stake for another company and zero is no one's talking to me, where are you in having someone sign that? Uh, sort of moving very quickly up from six to seven to eight. Okay. Because people have money. People understand that gas in America is going to stay cheap. People understand that the only other alternative is Qatar, and they're limited in terms of how fast they can go. That between the gas that is no longer being delivered to Europe and the fields that are declining in Asia, you're looking at about 120 to 150 million tons equivalent from Europe and another 50 million tons from Asia. There is no conceivable way where supply can keep up with demand. And 80% of the supply will come from two places. Qatar and the United States. The business model at the moment in the United States doesn't exist. You've got three projects in the US that constitute 80% of the potential capital capacity of the United States. But a lot are trying to come online. Is there a chance that we're going to be oversupplied now with export projects, for example? Zero. Because they would like to come online. They have to solve the riddle. How do I finance my project? And if you don't ask for the right price, uh, in order to finance your project, you have no chance of getting it financed. Mm -hmm. So you today, I mean, when I worked at Chenier and we did our projects, we agonized to see what is that cost of service number that actually makes sense. We came to the conclusion that it was $3 for Sabine Pass, $3.50 for Corpus Christi. Having looked at all the different things, what does it cost to build one, uh, how do you source the gas, how do you operate, all of these different things. This is 10 years later. We've had cost inflation. Interest rates have gone up. That $600 a ton that it cost me in Sabine Pass is going to cost over $1,000 a ton today. On that basis, you need a service cost of $5 to justify it. Mm -hmm. And yet, our competitors are selling capacity at $250. At $250, you cannot finance a project unless you find a very wealthy donor who's willing to put the equity up for no return. So talking about equity, how much, how much of the equity in Driftwood are you willing to sell? Well, we're going to sell probably 40 to 45% of uh, phase one. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, on that basis, we'll have enough equity. We've already put a billion dollars of equity. We think the banks will follow us for somewhere between six and eight billion dollars. So we need about five to six billion dollars of equity. <clears throat> we put one, so we've already secured that 15, 20%. We'll put at least another one. And then we look for two and a half to three billion dollars from potential partners. For you personally, you've had uh, your shares in Tellurian uh, as a loan collateral. There's been some margin calls. How much more equity do you have as loan collateral that could be called? Enough. Enough? Yes. <laughs> Is that, shouldn't that worry shareholders? <laughs> I, I, look, uh, Alex, you never have to go, you're never going to have to do a collection for me. I'm fine. <laughs> you are fine, but yes. then if you, but if you had to sell for margin calls, it's going to hurt the share price. You, I mean, this is fine. I'm going to be very well represented. Uh, I don't have an issue. Uh, and this is pride more than money. I've got more money than I'll ever spend. So 
Right, uh, but if they're margin calls, then your shareholders are going to yeah. deal with a lower we're price. We're done. I made a deal five years ago that was not exactly the wisest deal I've made, but it's too late. I did not expect COVID. I did not expect all the things that have happened. So sometimes you make mistakes. Is uh, it over? You, you Is, live with it. You live with it. So you're still going to live with it. You got to live with it. Yeah, but I'm, I'll be fine. You'll I mean, be fine. I'm, I'm going to make, I'm going to be very, very, I'm going to be even more successful than I've been if this works. So I, I, there's no issue. <laughs> um, okay, l l last question. Um, we were talking about how many more projects are looking for FID. And I'm just curious as to the way that you're selling driftwood in the equity versus, say, long-term contracts to get FID. Does that make your job easier or harder when you're competing with other exporters? So, of course, it makes life harder because you're trying to reinvent something that has worked. So, but it was the same situation at Chenier where we said we're going to start indexing things to Henry up prices. Everybody said this is impossible. That's not how this business is done. Well, it worked. And we financed 45 million tons and we built them on time, on budget, and inexpensively compared to everything else that was happening around the world. We're back to the same position. I think today, given the fact that prices have gone up, that $3 that we were charging at Sabine Pass is no longer relevant. You mm -hmm. have to go up to $5. Mm -hmm. it, it's mm -hmm. intuitively right. Mm -hmm. uh, I can get into the details. It's not very interesting. But if you think <laughs> in terms of interest rates and inflation, if it was $3 10 years ago, it's probably $5 yeah. today. There is no market for $5. And you work really, really hard in order to make 25 cents. Yeah. Whereas the market is giving you a ten and ten dollar margin, right. so your choice is you spend fourteen billion dollars and you make two to three hundred million dollars, if everything goes well, or you spend fourteen billion dollars and you make four or five billion dollars a year. Which one would you take? So th this is my last one. To this point, um, Gunvor then. Yes. That's based on the a long term contract, yes. right? So in theory, if they go away, you don't need them because you're trying to do the equity stakes now. But they're pegged on JKM prices. So they peg on global prices. But are you worried they're going to go? What so, if they go away? I mean, I'm very happy to have them because it will alleviate for me the need to get 10 ships, uh, which would be a major burden on my balance sheet at a time where I can't really afford it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it, it's a win-win situation. It's good for them because they get all the optionality, and it's good for me because I alleviate the needs to get like a couple of billion dollars a year of shipping expenses. Level of confidence that they stick? 100%. They're good people. Uh, we've had a very, very pleasant relationship with mm -hmm. them. Um, and. Uh, we are going to stay in business with each other. And this morning, uh, they've announced that they've made a deal with Chesapeake to actually acquire some LNG at an unnamed facility. So I'm going to keep it unnamed and <laughs> based on global prices. So you, you see that they're building their own strategy to be able to access American gas and put it on global markets. Fair enough. Connect the dots. Um, last question I'm asking everybody. What's going to power my car or turn on my lights in 10 years? Uh, you're going to have three cars because you're affluent. You're going to have the one that you take to the office in an emergency. Okay. You're going to have the one that you take to the country when you need to go three or 400 miles to Long Island or to wherever you spend your vacations. And you're going to have your cool electric cars uh, as your third car. The other so two? The other two the have other gasoline two are or going are to be e combustion engines because if you have an issue and you can't refill your car, you don't want to be stuck having to re recharge your car in the middle of some unknown place. Think about it if you're in California and there's a fire and they're telling you you cannot plug in your electric vehicle today because there's a power shortage, but you need to get the hell out of here and drive 400 miles. How are you going to do that?